In the previous lecture, we saw that Mesopotamian prophecy can shed light on the Israelite court prophecy as described in the Bible. Another relevant issue is the fee paid to the prophet. In one of the letters we quoted before, the prophet is said to be paid by the king's official. Afterwards, on the following day, a prophetess of Dagan of Turku came and spoke to me. Beneath straw, water runs. They keep on sending you messages of friendship. She demanded a lachurim garment and a nose ring, and I gave them to her. Evidence of palace officials paying prophets for their work is found in several administrative texts. The same convention is associated with the peace prophets in the Bible. The prophet Micah describes it in a mocking tone. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against him who puts nothing into their mouths. Can we then conclude that biblical prophecy is unique within the ancient Near East in its independent and critical approach toward the king? Many scholars believe that the picture is more complex. Several of the Mari letters, in fact, betray traces of prophetic opposition to the king. One example is the letter cited in Lecture 5. This letter describes the prophet's wrath when he insisted that a gate should be built to the temple. The prophet even threatened future disaster if his demands were not met. The official reporting this incident does not protest against the boldness of the prophet. Rather, he writes to the king to make sure that the task was completed. This letter raises again the question of whether the prophecies we have in our hands can be considered a representative sample. Is it possible that many Mesopotamian prophecies which might have changed our view have been lost? Did Mesopotamian prophets call for social justice or criticize the king, but their prophecies did not survive? We cannot answer these questions with certainty. In summary, if we do try to conclude anything on the basis of the texts we have, we should probably describe the relationship between biblical and Mesopotamian prophecy in terms of evolution rather than revolution. The typical trademarks of biblical prophecy are its rich poetic language, its criticism of the people and palace, and its theology of social justice. These characteristics are evident here and there in Mesopotamian prophecy, However, they only come to a full blossom in the Bible. Israelite prophecy arose in Israel as part of a broader ancient Near Eastern phenomenon. However, in Israel, prophecy took on a sophisticated form and became the central platform for Israelite theological and literary creativity during the First Temple period.